Can we change our realities? Can we shift our timelines and live another experience? Yes, we can. Hey good people, this is John Mike again. Thanks for getting on my channel, watch my videos. If you're looking for more freedom in life, um, a way to strengthen your confidence, your body, your mind, create your own income, this would be a channel for you to follow. Okay, so can we change our realities completely? Can we change timeline, like branch out to a totally different timeline? I tell people that yes, you can do that but you have to do it yourself. Today, coming back here to Maladara uh, in the yoga retreat center is, in a way, one way for us to portal into a totally different reality than where we come from, especially, and where we live right now. And uh, today, actually, I wanted to introduce you to a guy that has an amazing story. Uh, his name is Jeff Cloud. We're going to sit down and we're going to talk about this, how you can tune your frequency, because that's what it's all about so that you can start to experience the more dream reality that you want to have when it comes to career or love life, money, where you live, how you dress, anything that makes you feel better, makes life more purpose-filled and, and makes you happy. Hello guys, so here we are with Jeff, good day, Great I still want to do this uh, talk, I really want to have a, a conversation to talk about the things that we talked about when we connected a couple of weeks ago, and uh, yeah, I look like a scar face today, <laughs> so I don't care about makeup. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk uh, to you about your, your story and how you ended up in Thailand and actually you know, had the courage to follow your dream. Um, maybe it wasn't a dream at the time, but you want to change. What you told me at least was really interesting. So it would be cool to share that with people on YouTube that are really looking for a change in their life. And I think a lot of people are, are now, especially in 2020 with the last month of change we have had. So many people want to break out and do something new or at least experience a better life in some way. So. So maybe we should start there. Um, I have some notes so we can cover some topics. Okay. Um, it would also be cool to um, have you t tell us about the mentor program and the coaching that you do with people. It's pretty powerful, I think. And it's needed for the planet. So, um, so, so let's start with your story first. I mean, we are in Thailand. We're having a really good time here. We are at the Maladara uh, Yoga Retreat Center. Uh, one thing I would like to hear about is your journey, your adventure, showing up in Thailand. How did that happen? Okay. Well, I had, among other things, I'd been a recording engineer in California for about 25 years. Um, always been a big fan of guitar and music. And I had, after I left all of the corporate jobs that I all paid a price for, mentally and physically, to chase more money. It just never resonated with me. And so I ended up starting my first recording studio when I was 17 years old. And I actually ended up 
getting carpal tunnel really bad from working at an agency that was based on, it was ruled in fear and numbers. And after about eight months of working there, I couldn't move either one of my wrists. So it was a blessing. It forced me to do something else. And so I ended up living in my recording studio so I didn't have to pay rent for another place to live. And I loved it. And so I did that in five different studios for almost 20 years. And my last version of my studio was in a three bedroom house, two story house in Northern San Diego. And after seven years, a freak accident happened. A little pipe broke underneath the kitchen floor and it was just enough to flood the carpet and the walls. It didn't ruin any of my gear, but that put me out of business for six months while construction was happening. Make a long story short, we ended up losing the house because the landlords lost money from the insurance company. I ended up moving out and um, I got an opportunity to come to Thailand. And at that point in time, I was kind of like, I had done enough work going down the rabbit hole and the work that I do is around frequency and vibration, knowing and realizing that our thoughts and our words and the vibration that we absolutely hold creates our reality. So I got an opportunity to come to Thailand. It was exciting, but there was a little bit of fear because I only had $650 to my name. My friend at the time just said, just jump. And I followed my intuition. And because of that, everything opened up for me. Possibilities that would have never been possible, staying in San Diego, being in fear, trying to create another studio, which at that time, the market, things had slowed down. You know, I've got a five-star resume. I've been very blessed with the people that I've recorded from around the world. But the point is, I jumped and I followed my passion. And I've been here four years now and everything's opened up for me. So I guess if I could share anything with anybody, it's to, if there is a program that's running fear, identify it because it's a lie. Yes, we all wanna be secure, but what is security? There is really no such thing as security. You could have a million dollars in the bank and die tomorrow. Are you really living your passion of what you wanna do? And so I followed my passion, I came to, to Thailand and everything is just lined up because of that. So that, that's been a big jump, uh, I would say. I think um, I've noticed how we have been living the last month because of the pandemic and the lockdown. There's a huge contrast and split in what kind of reality people experience, especially in Norway, where I come from, and also, of course, in the United States with all the madness happening there. Two completely different realities because we actually had a pretty good time here. And you didn't go back. You I've never been back. Been back. I've never been back. What the energy here and the people and the, the frequency. And when I speak about frequency, people might not be completely aware of that word, but there's an energy to everything. There's an energy to towns. There's an energy to cities. There's an energy to the land and, and to the nature. And, and to me, there's a very high vibrational heart frequency here where we are. And so that's, that's what I resonate with. And, uh, it's been very good to me. And those are the things that I talk about um, in my message and coaching too, is for people to tune, to choose a reality basically. And I, I remember um, there's a girl I've been working with where I told her because she got too much into the fear-based madness that's been happening the last weeks and months, that it started to become her. Uh, and she got paralyzed so much that it, she couldn't continue her work on her business. So I use the analogy of the radio. You have to choose what channel you want to. Everything is happening at once in the radio. Everything is broadcasted at once. But you have to choose where to dial the frequency. So I really get that. Yeah. Great analogy. And, and, you know, I share in the journey that I do with people and in the book, you've got to be able to begin to track a frequency of a thought. Every thought, every fear-based thought, every Every low vibrational thought, every judgment has a low vibration to it. Those are essentially magnets. So if we don't catch the low vibrational frequency and go in and shift it to something that we really want to attract, then there's a good chance that we could keep attracting. And you see this with people. I keep attracting the same guy in relationships or the same 
you know, lack of money or whatever. So identifying the frequencies that you're running day to day and other tools such as setting your frequency as soon as you wake up out of what we call the sleeping dream, set your frequency for that day and do it every single day. Your life will shift in incredible ways. It's not just new age talk or mumbo jumbo. It works. And I had to go through and dismantle my fears and my doubts and all my programs that I learned when I was a child through the things that happened to me in my current soul's journey. But there's nothing more valuable that I could ever share with anybody than to become consciously aware of your thoughts, your words, and your emotions because they are creating your reality. And that's why I love playing with this stuff because it works. I say conscious awareness is the only game in town. That's true, yeah. It's what, um, it's what, uh, I think that's the, um, the main topic uh, or the main insight people need to catch on to, to, to get out of a loop um, and get out of um, a, the, their current life situation or the, the life design that they more or less have created themselves if they want to make some change. Okay, so one of the things um, I know people are afraid of uh, is to make a choice, actually, because they, most people believe that the reality they have is the one, it, it is what it is. And, it's, uh, and since we don't know what's going to happen when we make a new choice of a new segment in life, uh, it's scary. And that's understandable, of course, because we are, we are on a soul on this planet, but we, most people don't even know the you know, their purpose or, or journey forward, and that makes it scary. And I remember that from when we came to Thailand the first time, we had no damn clue of what was going to happen. We had three days of an Airbnb, and that was it. But the time after that had been a blessing. So how was that for you? Because you didn't know what we were coming to. There was, a, there was obviously a little bit of the old program of what if it doesn't work out, but I could describe it like this. Here's your life. It's a box, in a way. I'm not saying this pertains to everybody, but you got your job, you live where you live, you got your friends. You might, have, you might have friends even globally on Facebook, like a lot of us do now. But if you don't step outside of that box and question the programs that are running, there's an infinite, and I mean infinite amount of timelines or new scenarios that could that are already available to you if you can imagine it it already exists on a timeline now, i don't know if everybody ex understands that but there's no such thing as time so there's all these different dimensions and scenarios and if you can think it it exists just by the fact that you can think it yeah. so the key is to really ask yourself am i limiting myself right now and to be able to catch when you have that fear, because the fear is a lie. It's a safety program that could be millions of years old to protect you from dinosaurs when you were living in a cave or whatever. Yeah. But nowadays, it's really about busting those programs because we're all running programs. We've all been taught through the media, the school system. I grew up Catholic. I, I mean, I was taught all these limiting, limiting fear-based programs. And when I met my teacher in 2001, he had me look at my belief system. And here was one of the biggest aha moments I've ever had in my life. I realized that none of my beliefs were even mine. They all came from my parents, my grandparents, the school system, the media, history books that mostly turned out to be a lie. And that's the shock in the beginning to realize that we've been programmed mostly, if not completely, by external sources. So if you can even be open to that, that opens a door to aha moments where you can go, let, here's the key, question everything. Question every belief. And you can feel a limiting belief because it feels small. It's fear-based, it's doubtful, it's there's not enough, I'm not safe. Those are the doorways to stepping into what we truly are which I want everybody to get this term. We are infinite, unlimited, multi-dimensional beings. That's a lot for some people. It is, but <laughs> just be open to that. Okay, yeah. what is an unlimited, multi-dimensional being? Well, let's look at the first word, unlimited. 
There's nothing limiting us unless we, unless we choose a belief that says we're limited. We can heal ourselves, we can create anything, we can manifest anything, literally anything. And so just play with that if, that, if me saying that triggers you in any way, shape, or form. Because I had to go through the same process. I was like, how come other people are manifesting things that you know, I haven't been able to manifest? And so I had to go in and look at my belief system. And then I was like, oh, I see. That was a limiting belief system that came from somewhere else. So this opens up a huge door for people. So why is, it why is it scary? Why is it scary to make a big change in life? Well, you can make choices. Um, and one of the choices, one of the first choices I think you have to make is that you want a change. You, as long as you know that you want a change, there will be a way to figure this out. And one way is to start to deprogram your mind uh, your fears and all that and I've had that all, all of that myself and you start to reprogram your mind which only has a benefit for you personally okay so one one question I would like to ask I know a lot of people want change but what are the one of the things that people can do people that feel uh, scared about a change in life uh, one thing they can start doing to feel safe about um, getting out on a journey and making a life change. I mean, like for example, for us, we moved to, to Thailand. Everything turned out to be better. But for people, it's scary. So what, are the, what is the one thing people can do to try to get rid of I can name off a few, but I would say you can connect with people now through the internet. There's groups within these cities that, you know, support groups, conscious awareness groups. Um, I find people when I travel to be very friendly and very willing to share information. Um, it's kind of like family where, oh, you stepped out of the, the matrix too, you know, for, for lack of a better word. So the number one thing I think is to believe that the universe will support your decision if you take the next step. So you could do something like begin to journal, start to map things out, envision every day that you're traveling or where you're, you're at. You're surrounded by people and synchronicities that show up to support you. Because that's what literally happens when you go, I'm going to trust. Why? Because we're actually creating our reality. So start with the mind work first. Everything starts with the thoughts. Everything so. starts with the belief. Now I know a lot of people that say, I'll believe it when I see it. That's actually 180 degrees the yeah. wrong way to look at it. Yeah. You believe it. You know it, and you know that if you state it and you water the seeds and take even a simple action like reaching out to somebody on the internet and go, hey, um, how much is it there to rent a place? How do you do this? How do you do that? Now you're creating a flow of energy. You don't have to have all the pieces plugged in. You don't actually want to have all the pieces plugged in because you want to leave room for surprise, magic, and miracles beyond anything you even thought. This is where it just takes a little bit of faith and but I'm telling you, it works. I'm well, living proof. Okay, so one thing I wanted to ask you, we talked about this earlier today, you have a pretty cool uh, way of going about reacting versus observing. Um, can you explain that? I think it, it was a really good. It's a very powerful process that I take people through in the book. The book's called Waking Up in the Dream. We're dreaming right now. And this is something I learned from my teacher, Don Miguel Ruiz, back in 2001, when I started mentoring with him. Um, we end up getting a belief system as we talked about. Now what happens with most people is the ego reacts to any information that comes in to challenge that belief system. So you see this everywhere in life, Republican versus Democrat, Black Lives Matter. You see people that become what I call in the book automatic reactors. Anytime you're an automatic reactor, I call that a trigger. A judgment is a trigger, feeling fear is a trigger. So you can feel a trigger when it happens in your body. So the key is to train yourself to feel that and go, okay, I just had a judgment, I know that's about me. The ego wants to say that all the judgments are about what's wrong out there, but that's not the truth. 
yes, there may be some things wrong that need to be fixed in the external world, but every judgment, again, is a magnet and it will attract more things that you judge into your life. So I teach people to become the conscious observer versus the automatic reactor. And if you can even have the, the awareness to take this in right now and go, hmm, okay, I'm going to commit and be open to being a conscious observer and every time I get triggered or react or have a judgment, I'm going to stop, take a breath and go, oh, I just got triggered, I had a judgment or a reaction, and then ask this powerful question, it'll change your life. So the powerful question is, I just got triggered or had a judgment, what is this trying to teach me about an energy belief or judgmental energy that I am still holding because you can't get triggered or have a judgment unless you're holding that same like frequency underneath in your subconscious. This is a game changer for people if they're willing to do it. And I take them through that process in 30 short days and they start to see the program, they start to dismantle it and it's, as you know, it's life changing stuff. Yeah. So that's probably the easiest way I can explain it. That's a good one. I think a lot of, I mean, we have these every day for different reasons. Um, and for, diff, yeah, for different reasons based on our past. And I guess, you know, as with me, we, our past is not only this life and childhood, but other lives that have had a huge impact and are kind of seeping through into this reality. I mean, some people have reactions based on previous life. Absolutely, so. absolutely. And the frequencies that we're holding or some stuff that might have got transferred from one lifetime to another into our DNA or even things from our parents, grandparents or ancestors or past lives, like you said, where we don't even necessarily remember it, but we're reacting to that. Like we could get around fire or, or go to the zoo and see a lion with sharp teeth and have a flashback from something that happened in your life. The key is to feel it, track it, and go, what is this trying to teach me? So we can clear those lower vibrational frequencies and therefore stop having that affect us or stop attracting those same things into our life. Because the frequencies we're holding subconsciously are magnets. Huge interesting topic uh, for learning self-mastery, to master your life. One of the most important things that I have been teaching a lot of people the last months is that you have to consider your input. What do you allow into your reality, or first of all into your mind, which is going to create your reality? What do you allow into your, into your reality to, to shape your life? And that includes all input. It includes the food you stuff in your mouth because it's going to shape you, you know, and put, your, put you in a certain state of mind. It includes knowledge that you decide to consume. Uh, watching the news, the media is a fucking madness channel, so I would advise to zone that out. The third one is friends and family and a network. So those are the three most important things to start to adjust. Because if you are like most people that blindly just watch Netflix, watch entertainment, watch news, read newspapers, you mind feed yourself fear propaganda every single day or whenever you watch that kind of stuff. The second one is that people are eating the wrong things. So their bodies and their minds get foggy and sluggish and it makes you sick. The third one is a lot of people have the wrong network around them. So it's not going to support their future uh, dreams or lives. And uh, I just talked to a buddy of mine a few days ago, one of my past Taekwondo students talked about his uh, local network of friends and we noticed that it's not going to support his dreams. So keep that in mind when we talk about shifting your reality into another timeline and put your bar higher for who you should surround yourself with. Um, so I wanted to ask you, what is, what's one message that you can bring to our viewers to make them feel better? One technique. Unplug from all mainstream media. It's 24-7 fear-based all the time. There's an agenda behind it. Surround yourself with like-minded people that, you know, it's a choice. 
If you're running a program of fear, you've got a trauma you haven't healed, it's a little more difficult to, to just say, well, I'm just gonna be positive. You've got, you've got to really go in and look at it. This is the inner work and clear it. Forgive everybody involved and understand that that was part of your soul's journey. What is it trying to teach me? What can I share with other people by choosing to have this happen on my soul's journey? Now, a lot of people might say, well, I would have never chosen to have that really bad stuff happen to me. And 20 years ago, I would have told you the same thing. There's no way I would have ever chosen to go through all this hell and pain that I went through. But with the research I've done going down the rabbit hole about the soul's journey, we chose to do it. And you don't have to believe that. As my teacher said, don't believe me, don't believe yourself, but find out what resonates with you. So we have a choice in every moment of what we choose to focus on. Whatever we choose to focus on, again, we're going to attract more of that. So if you're focused on being in fear or you're giving your attention to all the bad stuff that people are posting on social media, that's going to lower your frequency. Again, what attracts your reality into your life? The frequency that you're holding. So unplugging from the media, unplugging from using statements like, I don't like this, I hate that. Those are very powerful statements that are magnetic that are attracting more of that into your life. So again, I teach people to create their day first thing in the morning as soon as they wake up and their head's still on their pillow. That is a huge life-changing act. Create your day the way you want it to be and don't allow these less than thoughts, if they do pop in or the judgments or the doubts or the fears, use them as a teaching tool and go, okay, I guess I'm still holding a little bit of that frequency still. Go in and clear it and heal it. And if you need somebody to help you do it, reach out to somebody like Johnny or somebody like myself and surround yourself with people that are going to mirror you so you can start to see the program and clear it. Because if you, don't, if you can't see the program, you can't clear it. So it's really key, but it's not that difficult to do it if you set your mind to do it. And there's many courses out there that teach you how to do it. Mine's called Waking Up in the Dream. The book's called Waking Up in the Dream. And it will step-by-step -step guide you through how to identify a program, how to heal it and clear it, and then to really understand how your thoughts, your words, and your emotion that you put behind them are creating your reality because they are frequency and vibration. I talk about that too, connecting with like-minded people. I had a call with a previous, one of my previous Taekwondo students uh, three days ago. He's kind of stuck in a loop and um, he thinks he got friends, uh, but I don't think he does because they're not on his level. So he feels lonely and he's trying to hold on to them, but it's not going so well. So it's like I said, you need to switch out your network. And that's basically why we are here at uh, Maladara today in Chiang Mai in Thailand. It's been a good place to connect. This is how we connected yeah. two weeks ago. Yeah. And we have basically attracted this ourselves. Uh, nobody dragged me here. I came here because I like a uh, mindful, peaceful place. I like the green nature around here. I like what I feel in my body and mind when I walk outside, which is called energy, basically. That's what we're talking about, energy. And I'm connecting with some really cool people because it seems like coming to a place like this, that's where the nice people are coming. Go to the place where the vibration is high. Where's that gonna be? Nature, um, people that are interested in improving themselves, doing conscious awareness work. It's not really gonna be in a bar, you know? Yeah. And, and my background is in recording, many people know. So, you know, I've been around alcohol and drugs most of my life and I just had to decide what do you want to do what do you want to do with your body and so I just quit doing that stuff and and I'm much happier because of it and um, so yeah everything is vibration and frequency go where the vibration is high with people that are accepting non-judgmental and they're operating from their heart instead of their mind that's cool uh, and actions. I usually put in the words action, but that's based on what you believe again and what thoughts and action, of course. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But yes, you uh, you told me you have been writing a book. Can we do, redo that? What was that? The name of the book? Um, I, I finished the book. It's called Waking Up in the Dream. And now I do a four week process where I take people online and in person, but a lot of people online 
that uh, have come across me on Facebook and my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. which is Portal to Awakening. So it's youtube.com, Portal to Awakening. All my videos are free. Um, it talks about the tools in the book and the course. And so people can find me on Facebook, Jeff Cloud, C-L-O-U-D. Um, I'm from San Diego, that'll come up. And um, where's the, your book to be found? My book is to be found on my website, portaltoawakening.com. I'm, I'm just getting ready to finish an audio version, and I'm getting ready um, to have it distributed at all the different outlets. I'm just in the process of completing that right now. So if you want to find it, you can find me on Facebook, Jeff Cloud, or you can go to portaltoawakening.com, and there'll be a link at the top for the book. Okay, and this leads me into your mentoring program, your coach program. Um, can you mention a few words about that? How does it work? The main course is called Waking Up in the Dream. And I've found that, you know, I'll do one session with somebody if they want to do that. And a lot of times we can really get to the root of something in one session. But what I've found is to give somebody the download of everything that I've learned and that I had to walk through in one session is difficult for people to grasp all that. So. I invite them to go on a four-week journey. And in this journey, we get on a call every week, but unlike what a lot of coaches do, I don't just show up for them on that call. I allow them to message me at any time during the day, every day, and in fact, I encourage it. Because if they're not sending me a message, I know that they're not diving in fully. And so I make it a point to really hold them accountable if they want to come on and they're putting their trust in me, I make sure that they're going to have a life-changing experience. And I'm able to do that over 30 days to where some of the things may creep back, but they're going to be able to see the programs and they're not going to be able to forget about it. And once you see it, you can't forget it. That's why it's life-changing stuff. So thank you for asking me that. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking that for a lot of people, uh, for a lot of people, it's, it's of course scary to look into the shitty stuff, um, but it's something that every human have, and it's actually part of our reason for being here, which sounds sucky, but that's, I mean, the, the purpose of being here on the planet is to, um, to upgrade ourselves. And we can't do that by living a life on the cl fluffy cloud. So we experience stuff, and that stuff impacts our lives. Um, and um, you don't want to drag around with those bags, right? I mean, it's scary to look into the dark stuff, but it's our own stuff. And um, uh, we know that if people just want to take time to look into that and let drop those shitty bags, um, they were starting to lighten up. Uh, and it's the doorway. Yeah. It is the doorway. And I'd like to say one thing that may give people peace of mind. The fact that people call this shadow work, that's not a great name or you know, looking at your stuff, it's, you could take on things that you've had. I work with people that have had issues and wounds for five, six, even seven decades. If you're just willing to go in and look at it, you can clear it so quickly that you'll be like, why didn't I do that before? So it's not all dark and it's not all scary. That's why I do my best to make it fun with people. We can laugh. You, this stuff's not happening to you now. It happened to you in the past. Yeah, you might true. still be creating, like, attracting the same relationships or whatever, but if you're just willing to look at it and be curious, mm -hmm. you can clear stuff that you've had for decades in a really, really quick amount of time. So it's all good news, and there's no getting around it. So start to have fun. When we become adults, everything starts to become so serious. I invite people, let's go in reverse and let's start to be more childlike and more playful because that's the key. And, and every cell of your body is feeling every thought and every word and every emotion. So that can be very stressful to be carrying this stuff on our back with us. So when you start to get playful, it signals your body that everything's cool, everything's safe. And I've seen people look 10, 20 years younger in one to two weeks after just clearing some of this stuff. It, just dive in and do it. Find somebody that you're comfortable with or find a group of people to support you in a non-judgmental environment. We're all working through our stuff. There's just layers, but if you're having fun and you're around cool people that support you, things start to just pop very quickly and then you go, oh, that's all it was? That's all it was? And then now you're like, okay, let me at it. Anything that I'm still 
holding that's still, you know, holding me back or whatever, now you know, now you have the tools to go in and do it. Because it's the same tools over and over. Just ask, what's the gift? And then forgive anybody that was involved. That's a big one. Especially when we receive childhood trauma or the really more intense things like abuse or rape or things. We've got to forgive. That doesn't mean that what the person did was right, but we've got to clear the energy and frequency. So we're forgiving for our own self. Yeah. It's very powerful. Yeah. Okay. The first place you guys can go to make this kind of a change, I think, is to we do a recap on this now. Start by going to um, Jeff's website, try out the course, figure out the book, read that, and let that be as a beginning for a positive change. Because the thing is that when you start looking into these things, you have basically already made a decision and start retuning, and that's going to create new situations coming up in your life which is basically what happened to us. We made a change and, and made a decision which now have us sit here and, and talk among great people and in a great place. It's, it's really about just figuring out what your real passion is. You know, when we come out of school, the school system, which is really a programming system of teaching you what to think instead of how to think, that's a big light bulb moment right there if you get that yeah. um, I know. and chasing money instead of doing something that you're really passionate about mm. it took me 20 years to figure that out that everything I did for money ran me into the ground it stole my soul it stole my passion and so I finally just decided I'm gonna do what I love which is music art nature and teaching even if I have to go live in the park and sleep on the grass and once I made that decision, I started attracting, I just set my frequency for that. This is what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna do this no matter what, because everything else beat me up, hurt my body, and was squashing my soul. Yeah. So. Okay, one more time, where do people go? Your website? My website is portaltoawakening.com. Cool. Yep. And Your book? my book is called Waking Up in the Dream. And That's course. and the course is called Waking Up in the Dream as well, cool. and um, you can find me on Facebook, Jeff Cloud, from San Diego, All right. and also a lot of free resources on my YouTube page, which is youtubecom forward slash portal to awakening. All my Facebook lives, all my videos that talk about the tools, you can go there and check and see if it resonates with you. I'm not trying to sell you anything. You know, there's plenty of things to invest your money in out there. Yeah, it is. Um, these tools work if yeah. you commit to doing them. I've done it myself. You know how it works. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your Good time job. and everything. I greatly appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah. All right, brother.